Hello everybody, welcome to Let's Talk Anatomy and today let's talk about the anatomy of the perineum and the perineal pouches. So what is the perineum? The perineum is this diamond shaped area in between the, uh, the thighs and below the trunk and it lies anatomically below the pelvic floor. And when you look at the boundaries of the perineum, it is bounded by the lower border of the symphysis pubis on top. Then we have the tip of the coccyx below, ischial pubic rami and the ischial tuberosity on either side and the sacro tuberous ligaments posteriorly. This is what gives it the diamond shaped appearance. In both males and females, the boundaries are the same and it forms the same kind of diamond shaped region but the only difference is in the appearance of the the presence of the external genitalia what are the subdivisions of the perineum in order to divide the perineum we have to first draw an imaginary line passing across the two ischial tuberosities and this divides the perineum into an upper triangle and a lower triangle the diamond is cut in half so the upper triangle is called the urogenital triangle and the lower triangle is called the anal triangle and today's topic the perineal pouches are dealt with in the urogenital triangle. In the anal triangle what we have are the anal canals and the ischial rectal fossae on either side which is another class for another day. So let's go to the boundaries and contents of the perineum but before that we have to see a few terms and structures. So what are the common terms that we need to know before we go into learning the boundaries of the perineal pouches? We have to see the features of the skin, the superficial fascia which is arranged into an outer fatty layer and an inner membranous layer. Then we have the urogenital diaphragm, a little controversial because many textbooks say it does not exist but as of now for our examination purposes we still have to write about the urogenital diaphragm. Alright, so we'll be dealing with it that way from the exam point of view. The urogenital diaphragm as well as its two fascia, the inferior fascia and the superior fascia. Let's move on. So what are the features in the skin? In a male, the perineal region, the skin of the perineal region has a midline drapeway which actually signifies that the organs there are developed from the two symmetrical halves. The median, midline drapeway of the male continues as the median drapeway of the scrotum. In female, there is a central cleft called the vestibule, which actually lodges the urethra and the vagina. So let's see the skin and its parts, features. So there you have the skin. What about the superficial fascia? The superficial fascia of the perineal region is arranged very similar to the abdomen. It has an outer fatty layer and an inner membranous layer. The outer fatty layer is continuous with the fatty layer of the abdomen, anterior abdominal wall, which is also called campus fascia. And you have that, there you have it, there you have the outer fatty layer. And then you have an inner membranous layer, which is continuous with the membranous layer of the anterior abdominal wall, which is the scarpus fascia. And this inner membranous layer in the region of the perineum is called the colles fascia. So there we have our first term, what is colles fascia? Colles fascia is the membranous layer of the superficial fascia in the region of the perineum. Let's see the attachments of the colles fascia. So the colles fascia is stretched across the pubic arch but it is not attached to the pubic arch. Instead, it is attached to either side of the ischial pubic ramus. It merges with the dartos of the scrotum as well as the penile fascia and then continues up into the anterior abdominal wall as the scarpa's fascia. So in the lateral view you can see the colleus fascia is forming there and then continuing up as the scarpa's fascia of the abdomen. Posteriorly it fuses with the perineal membrane. So now we come to the next important term. We will see what is perineal membrane in the coming slides and this posterior attachment is around a muscle called the superficial transverse perineal muscle over there. Right and it twists around the back of it and then fuses with the perineal membrane. 
what is meant by the perineal body that is another term that we have to see today so the perineal body is actually a poorly defined midline aggregate of a fibromuscular tissue and it is seen at the exact junction between the urogenital triangle and the anal triangle and it is seen to be tethered or connected to the skin of the perineal region but the important thing is we have to know the muscles forming the perineal body so there are fibers of a few muscles which interlace to form and strengthen the perineal body the perineal body is clinically significant in females because this is the body usually damaged during vaginal deliveries and to avoid that we give them an episotomy so what are the muscles we have the external anal sphincter we have fibers from the levator ani also converging at the perineal body we have paired deep and superficial transverse perineal muscles and then we have the bulbospondiosis muscle all right let's go to the next topic of the day that is urogenital diaphragm the urogenital diaphragm is a musculofacial partition across the pubic arches and it is located below the pelvic diaphragm now the pelvic diaphragm we dealt with in another class let's look at the urogenital diaphragm we'll just highlight just the urogenital diaphragm and then we will see where it is so that is the pelvic diaphragm it is a bowl like attached arrangement of muscles mainly formed by the levator ani and its multiple components it supports the entire pelvic viscera below the pelvic diaphragm we have what is called the urogenital diaphragm over there which is a flat muscular diaphragm the pelvic diaphragm was bowl like the urogenital diaphragm is flat and it is seen in the region of the urogenital triangle so there you have the urogenital diaphragm the view the arrangement of the urogenital diaphragm is more clear in a coronal section this is a coronal section we can label the bladder over there and here we have the pelvic diaphragm sloping down giving it its bowl like appearance it is formed by the levator ani and below that in blue i have highlighted it there in blue that is your urogenital diaphragm the flat muscular diaphragm now being a muscular diaphragm the urogenital diaphragm has got a superficial fascia and a deep fascia but before that the muscles which are set to form the urogenital diaphragm are the external urethral sphincter the deep transverse perineal muscles the sphincter urethrovaginalis and the compressor urethrae the first two muscles are seen in both males and females but the next two muscles the sphincter urethrovaginalis and the compressor urethrae are seen only in females and like i mentioned being a muscular diaphragm it has got a superior fascia and an inferior fascia discovered by fascia on either side simple as that so the superior fascia is called the upper fascia is called the superior fascia of urogenital diaphragm and the lower fascia is called the inferior fascia of urogenital diaphragm and this is where it gets interesting because the superior fascia as we said is the fascia lining the muscles superiorly but the inferior fascia is called is what is called wait for it the inferior fascia is called the perineal membrane for entrance purposes the perineal membrane is also called gallaudet's membrane all right so there we have colles membrane colles fascia and now we know what is the perineal membrane let's see the relationship of the perineal membrane to the colles fascia and then we'll understand the arrangement of the pouches better so the perineal membrane is located deep to the colles fascia so here we have the colles fascia that we already saw you can see that it's attached to the edges of the ischiopubic rami it stretches across the skin of the scrotum and the penile fascia and then it extends on to the anterior abdominal wall and becomes continuous with the scarpa's fascia of the anterior abdominal wall and once you remove the colles fascia you can see if i just make it a little less uh, opaque you can see the perineal membrane on the inside and that is over there the perineal membrane is attached to the inner margins of the ischiopubic rami all right so let's see inner surface of the ischiopubic rami and then there you have it the anterior end of the perineal membrane is thickened to form what is called the transverse perineal ligament so 
in the colis the case of the colis fascia it just stretches across the pubis and it continues into the abdomen but in the case of the perineal membrane there is a clear demarcation uh, at the anterior end of the perineal membrane and that thickening is called the transverse perineal ligament here you have it and once we make the lateral side on the one side of the issue of the ilia, iliac bone translucent you can see that the attachment is much deeper than the colis fascia let's look at it from the sagittal view here you have the perineal membrane and the perineal ligament transverse perineal ligament and the perineal membrane is continuous anteriorly with the superior fascia of the urogenital diaphragm that is given in orange and posteriorly it is connected to the perineal body so now let's orient and try to find out where the pouches are so here you have a half section of the pelvis we have placed the outline of the skin let's place the urogenital diaphragm and of course the perineal body the next muscle structure over there now let's draw the colis fascia which is continuous above as the scapa fascia of the anterior abdominal wall and then let us draw the perineal membrane which is the inferior fascia of the urogenital diaphragm given there in dark green the superficial perineal pouch is the space between the colis fascia below and the perineal membrane above so let's just shade that area here you have the superficial perineal pouch so it is closed posteriorly by the fusion of the colis fascia and the perineal membrane like we mentioned around the posterior border of the superficial transverse perineal muscles but anteriorly it is continuous with the superficial inguinal space which is the space in the anterior abdominal wall so the superficial perineal pouch is actually partly closed it is continuous with the abdominal wall and that is why when there is injury of the male urethra in this space of the urethra in this space urinary extravasation is actually collected into the anterior abdominal wall as well laterally the limiting boundary is the issue of pubic rami right what about the deep perineal pouch we label the same structures over there we have the skin we have the urogenital diaphragm and we have the perineal body we have placed the colis fascia and let's place the perineal membrane also the deep perineal pouch is actually located between the perineal membrane below and the superior fascia of the urogenital diaphragm above so it basically contains the muscles and it includes both these fascial boundaries as well anteriorly it is limited by the transverse perineal membrane a ligament sorry the transverse perineal ligament and posteriorly it is closed by the fusion of the superior layers and the inferior layers in other words the superior layer of urogenital diaphragm and the perineal membrane so the deep perineal pouch is a completely closed compartment what are the con what are the contents of these pouches let's see the contents and compare them with the female and the male deep perineal pouches so the muscles of the urogenital diaphragm are all there they have been mentioned common to both then we have the internal pudendal artery which is also common to both males and females as well as its three terminal branches the dorsal nerve of clitoris in females and the dorsal nerve of the homologous nerve is the dorsal nerve of the penis in males and what is different in both are uh, the vagina and the urethra are present in the females in the males you have the membranous part of the male urethra as well as something called the bulbo urethral glands and its ducts a paired bulbo urethral glands and their ducts what are the contents in the superficial perineal pouch so muscles are common to both the ischiocavernosus the superficial transverse perineae and the bulbo spongiosus there are a set of paired labial vessels and transverse perineal vessels in females in the case of males they are called paired posterior scrotal vessels and transverse perineal vessels what about the nerve supply or nerves present in this area in females we have a set of posterior labial nerves and the perineal branch of the posterior femoral cutaneous nerve in the case of males 
They are called the posterior scrotal nerves as well as the posterior branch of the femorocutaneous nerves. What structures are different? In the case of females, as we know, the vagina and the urethra are continuing out to the external atmosphere. So we have the vagina and the urethra. Here we have the homologous gland in female, which is a greater vestibular gland and the bulb of the vestibule, as well as the crust clitoridis. In the case of males, we have the spongy urethra, which is frequently injured, as well as the bulb of the penis and the crust penis. So there you have it, that is our perineal pouches, the boundaries and the contents as well as the subdivisions of the perineal area. I hope you enjoyed this class. If you really did, don't forget to like, share and subscribe and when you subscribe, do press the bell icon. If you have any classes that you would like me to take, do comment down below and I will make a really sincere effort to make those classes. Thank you so much.